Hi, it is Thursday, July 5th, and we're back at the A-frame. There it is. It's a beautiful day. It's rain overnight, so there's a little bit of mud around, but all the work stuff is dry, so that's great. Yeah, it's a gorgeous day. It's probably 80. Yeah, it's nice. Light breeze. It's a good day. So, today's agenda is to finish this short-legged A. That will get set aside, and then we'll put the bottom plates on, finish the bottom plates on this outside edge, which is simply just attaching two 2 by 4s Sorry. And then build the kitchen wall. So, in thinking about the kitchen wall, I'm going to stand here in the shade of this beautiful little here tree and thinking about the kitchen wall I really want it's gonna have a what a narrow wait it's gonna have a wide and but not very tall window that it's gonna be so it's a four foot wide window that is 18 inches tall so that as you're standing at that counter you have a nice wide view of the yard but it's also above what could be a workspace. So you might have a hot plate going, you might want to cook yourself something. And so, and it's a kitchen, so it has to have a few, a couple of shelves, not a lot. I mean, it's a tiny space, not meant for extensive, elaborate meals. But nonetheless, if you want to make yourself a cup of tea or, you know, a bowl of soup or something, there has to be some clearance from the shelf down to the counter. So looking at the kitchen in the cottage, I have the open shelves there um, and I like the height of them so I measured up like as far as like the, the height of the lowest shelf and the top shelf that would be the space in between would be perfect for where that window should fit so I use that to measure the bottom height of that window framing I changed my plan because the window was going to be a little bit lower but I don't want it to be like you have to duck down to look out the window you know I want it to just be a comfortable comfortable open window there it's going to be designed with um, so the four foot wide window is going to be centered on an eight foot wide wall so two feet on either side um, one side is going to have shelves there will be a shelf all the way across the top of the window the shelves on the side and then a shelf under I don't know how to explain it so if you're looking, you'll have the window, and then you'll have a shelf all the way across the top. And then down one side will be probably only one shelf in between, and then a lower shelf, smaller shelf, not very deep, that will run the length of all the way across to the end of that window. So on one side of the window, you won't have any bottom shelves. So if you have something big you want to put on the counter, it's not going to hit up against the shelf on that side but you will still have reasonable shelves on one side for cups and plates and things if you want them there and the shelf that goes all the way under along under the window would be nice for cups or you know salt and pepper or a little plant whatever but it'll be a reasonably functional space even if a little lopsided I think the design in the end will look pretty good so yeah so I changed my plans this morning with those new measurements in mind so that that window was a little higher on the wall. More counter clearance and better eye level view. And now I'm gonna build it. So finish that, put the bottom plates on, start on the kitchen wall. That's my day. Okay, we're set up to record. Um, it's sunny so I'll record as much as I can, but you're gonna have to ignore my painty pants because you know, these were the clean work clothes for today. I have paint all over them.
keep it together. We got one short side with an angle cut, but that's where the header will attach. Looking all right. So now I have to cut the triangular plate that attaches on both sides of this. I have a template that I um, cut initially in each of the triangle braces have been cut based on this template. It's 17 inches per side, which isn't a big deal. But sometimes when you're tired, it just doesn't work out. So it's best to, this is what they're all cut to. You don't cut one and then cut the next to match that because your number might gradually change like the telephone game. And so I always start based on this one. And uh, I'm gonna cut a couple of these. I still need this one because it needs to get attached to the inside of the first A that went up. Um, so I'll cut two more, save this for the very last, and then when I have access to that A again on the ladder without all those others stacked up in front of it, I'll uh, attach this. But, um, yeah, so this shouldn't take too long. things about working is that as you're cutting, you continuously need, when you're working by yourself, you continuously need to find things to hold your stuff still. Because you're, as you're cutting, especially if you're cutting across the grain, you get a lot of resistance and the piece wants to move away, slide around. So hoping this will help me. is marked so I know which end is the header end and which end is the peak. Otherwise, I've flipped it around so many times that I would never know. We need the nail gun. One of the things that the triangular brace does in cutting the angle cut on the top of the peaks because I'm cutting across the grain through two layers of 2 by 4 the saw blade might drift, my cut might not be perfect. And when you get into little like millimeters of variances, going back and expecting to cut that with the saw isn't reasonable. So the triangles, the braces at the top are cut exactly the same on every single one. And so as long as I line up the inside of this arch right here, and the outside of that triangle is lined up correctly on the outside of the arch of the rafter, I'll create the same peak every time. So it's a little bit of an insurance because if there's a minor gap, like you can see there, there's a minor gap. I haven't lined them up yet, but if I had to keep that little gap at the top of the peak, as long as the bottom met, and as long as my triangle lined up correctly, I should match every time. So that when I go to put my roofing on, 
everything lines up the way you need to. Right? You need your geometry to still come together. It's my um, novice way of managing what I know I'll do wrong. Gotta make sure all the nails are all the way sunk in. The nail gun doesn't always do it. Nails. So some nails with the nail gun, you'll shoot them in, but they'll hit maybe a knot or a variance in density inside the board, and they'll push in a different direction. So you always have to watch your edges and make sure no nails actually shot out the side. It's one of the reasons you don't put your hand next to the edge of the wood that you're nailing either. Anyway, I've got a blowout, so I'm going to take this nail out. Easier said than done because it's really in there. Now, this one's not coming out, so it's just going to get pounded in. Okay. I don't know at what point the prior video recording stopped. But that A is done. Both sides are both sides of the of the brace triangles are attached. I've pulled it over to the side over there. It's just going to stay there until it's ready to be used. And now I'm going to build the kitchen. Or well, first I'll put those bottom plates on. That doesn't take anything. They just get nailed on. And then I'll build my kitchen framing of the primary wall. Yay! Super fun. No rafters. <laughs> There it is! One gloriously refreshing big gulp. And one kitchen wall laid out and ready for nailing. It took a while just because I'm not a fast mover. <laughs> That's the truth. I'm not a fast mover. But it is done. Ready to be nailed together. I need some modifications. I would call them framing improvements <laughs> as I went along to my original plan just because thinking ahead they're just little things that would make it easier so they are all now cut I'm gonna nail it all together got some extra nails right there Lervin had to go into town and get the mail and so he stopped by and got me that refreshing big gulp which is Unique to Hawaii, that particular drink. It's Lily Koi fruit juice from the, from the fountain, which is amazing. It is actually mostly juice and, you know, I'm sure a good amount of sugar. But I have him dilute it with some Sprite because I like a little fizz when I'm hot. Not too much fizz. And that syrup, pop syrup, I don't like it. It gives me, like, sticky mouth. I don't like pop very much, but... That lily koi with a little bit of fizz in it is just perfect. Um, it is, I think, it was 83 earlier or 81 earlier. I think it's a little warmer now. But the breeze has picked up. So with the temperature going up, also the breeze has gone up. So it's still perfectly comfortable. I'm all sunscreened up for the day, though, because it's all sunshine today. And I don't need a burn. So... I'm going to nail this baby together. Uh, it's small enough, I do believe, I can tip it up myself. Yeah, so I'm going to try to tip it up myself, see if I can't brace it. It'll be a little tricky, but if I plan ahead, if I, if I plan ahead and screw 
a 2x4 onto this wall. Before I begin, I can tip it up and then pivot that 2x4 out to meet the floor and then screw that down. I do believe I should be able to do that all by myself. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I might put um, a vertical piece of wood on the outside of the of the house itself, screwed into the floor framing, just to make sure I don't over tip the wall and throw it right off the side of the house. Because that could happen. I did the same thing here through this vertical piece here when we tipped up that first day. We certainly did not want to tip that giant thing right off the side of the house because it would be so hard to get it back up. This is a much smaller wall, but uh, nonetheless I don't want to throw it over the side. <laughs> so I'll probably take a few precautions. So yeah, here I go. So there it is. The kitchen wall. And the kitchen window. It's up and ready for the next steps. The next steps will be to move some of these A's, which I obviously cannot do by myself. But, oops, one thing I can show you now is what I meant when I said there was a bump out. Sun's probably in your way. But here's the A. And then, but on this side, there is a vertical wall. And there'll be a little roof that will join it right there. It's exactly half of the width of the, of the room centered on this wall. So the A's will, three of these A's, well, one of these A's will move to join it at this bottom edge. The other two A's will end up going over there. One to join on that end, and then another to join to be at the end of the house. And then that short legged A will end up in the center, meeting on a header that will be holding up the roof to this little kitchen area. I don't know if any of that makes sense. I'm pretty sure, because I'm walking around on a hill, that it's a pretty poorly shot video. <laughs> but I'm pretty excited that I got to build a vertical wall. Hold on and I'll hop up there. Here, this is eye level. And you can, when you're standing at the kitchen counter, you'll look out there. You'll have a nice little view. It is in the end, it feels high to me, but I have to remind myself of what I planned. And honestly, it's done, so it's not going to change. <laughs> anyway, so, so tomorrow, not tomorrow, tomorrow we have Lurvin's birthday staycation. So all these A's, in the end, you'll have to help me move them around. Next step. But that will probably be... Sunday, because we've got to pull, one of these has to come out and land at this outer edge. Another has to come out and join up right there. And then the remaining two, well, one is already attached, but the other will attach, it'll snug right up into there. And then I can start then I can build a header between the two A's that are on the sides of this wall. There are two by sixes down there to do it with. So I need to build a header that fits in between to join the A's. And then I can build the little side walls, triangular shaped side walls, that will join this vertical wall to an A. And then I can put the roof on of, to that. And then we can start sheathing. Well, a few pieces of sheathing will go on even before. As soon as we get the A's into position, in order to make sure that they all stay where they are supposed to be, and they're good and stable, we'll be putting a few pieces of sheathing around 
just to make sure, and on this side especially, because this is all just an A. There's no act, no uh, funky angles over here, so we can put some sheathing on over there and really lock them in so they don't swing around. At this point, I haven't checked. I checked that initial A for plum. It's leaning out just a hair so at the top, so it's going to have to come in a bit. But we can put some sheathing on and get everything plumb so that as we keep building, we don't end up with a bunch of stuff that's out of plumb. But good progress. So tomorrow, as I was saying, is uh, we leave for Waimea for Liberin's birthday staycation. We spend the night Saturday, we'll come home, but it won't be until later in the day because we're going to do some stuff around up there. So maybe Sunday, I'll get Lervin up here. I've already asked him if he can help me move some of these around. We've got a couple 2x4s over there for bracing. We have a couple of extra 2x6s two two over there if we need them for bracing. And as we have one piece of sheathing that can also help us out. Um, but so as we go, I think we have enough material to keep it all in place. But yeah. So Sunday, yeah, I'd like to drag some of these big puppies around and lock them down. It's pretty straightforward. This one's already got marks on it for where the for where the post should sit. I need to mark these up so that they are the same. Uh, width between the A rafters as what will be on this side. I mean this side's it's pretty self-explanatory. There's one already at the very end. There'll be one snugged up against this wall. Same thing over here. But over on this one, we're going to want to make sure that the three that go in on this side are aligned correctly in their, their respective spots. But it's coming together. I'm pretty pleased. It was an excellent day today. It was so nice. Still obviously super nice. I had to take a bit of a break because my phone died and I couldn't video this actually when I finished. So I went back to the house, charged my phone, and had some more to drink because I was so thirsty. Um, and now I'm back just to film this so you guys can see what we got done. But yeah, so what are we saying about the shelves? Now that there's a wall there, it might make more sense. So this is an eight foot wall with a four foot window in the middle. When it's done, it'll have, it's eight feet wide. But it's only seven feet tall. It's not a super tall. The, the header will sit at eight feet. And then the little roof on this bump out will drop by a foot. So this is a seven foot top rail. So this section here will have a shelf that runs all the way across right at the top of the window. And then there will be probably just a single shelf. There will be shelf little shelf just in between and then another shelf that runs all the way across but just to the end so you'll have a shelf all the way across and you'll have a little shelf over here and you'll have a shelf that runs into the window and but stops so that this section here won't be all filled up with shelves in case you need to put something big and tall on the counter you won't have a bunch of obstruction this wall where it goes to meet the A. You can see that there's a bit of a, a reach there. There will also be, right where this st these studs are, there will be a wall here that comes, whoops, that comes down to this line here and then meets over at the A. That's where the toilet room will be. The entry to the toilet room will be on the, um, on this side wall, but so the kitchen will have a, a solid wall from that post to the A and then in a few more feet. So even beyond the counter here, so you'll have a counter space, but you'll have a solid wall here. So you can hang something on the wall or uh, my thought was, because there's a toilet room there, but there's a sink, will actually be in the kitchen here. Would be like if you wanted that I'd hang a mirror there on that flat wall. So you can brush your teeth, 
at the sink, wash your hands, comb your hair, and have a reasonable space to do that, I think it'll be okay. But anyway, those are all my those are all my plants. But yeah, so there will be actually a pretty good sized flat wall. This is going to go up to eight feet, and then the wall to the bathroom is eight feet, and then that's probably going to be a six foot wall. So that's a good solid wall. If you don't want to hang a mirror on it, if you're staying here a long time, I suppose you could put uh, the mirror could actually go onto this wall. You could put a TV on that big wall. And then you could watch TV in bed. That might be a better idea. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, anyway, so those are all my plans. It might sound like gibberish to you, but I, in my head, they're already done. I can see the whole thing. I, in my head, everything is visual. Off we go. And we'll probably won't be recording anything about this little house until Sunday. And yeah, my hope is to get the A's into position and lock them down on Sunday. Um, I don't have enough wood to build anything more right now, other than a header, maybe. The header for the kitchen opening to make it meet up here, but um, but not enough wood yet for the side walls. So, uh, so yeah, getting those A's into place and locking it all down and maybe building a header is the goal for Sunday, if I can if I can do it. I'll have a helper, so I think I can. We shall see. Don't forget to wish Lerman a happy birthday. <laughs> anyway, there they are, all in a row. Okay, that's enough. Bye!